Welcome to the Rio Grande Valley Basketball Officiating Chapter Crew Chief Camp, led by veteran NCAA Division I men's basketball official Ruben Ramos. Join our Ref Life podcast episode to master key officiating responsibilities, managing crews, enforcing rules, effective communication, and conflict resolution. Elevate your leadership on the court and excel as a crew chief. The purpose of today in leading the session, as, as I understand it, is that all of you would like to be considered to be, so I'll use the word here, change of beat, crouching, but in your mechanics book and, and officially, technically, by mechanics book, you know, we have three referees in a three-person game, or two, this is a two-person game, right? You have, a, you have a referee and then an umpire one, and an umpire too. Uh, can they see me? Invite some more chairs. Court. Yes, sir. I'm on. I'm on these guys. And mm-hmm. yes, sir. All right. So referee, umpire one, umpire two, umpire one, and umpire two. You should also you one in the end set. And referee, umpire one, umpire two. The referee, for the purposes of this conversation, I'll refer to you as the foot chief. And because when you think about the responsibilities of the R or the referee. It's really about being the crew chief. And you'll hear me use that terminology a lot, right? And so the purpose of this breakout session, as I understand it, is the Real Brady Valley Tassel chapter of basketball uh, is, this is like a prerequisite. You want to be considered to be a crew chief when, when you assign to a with them, right? Well, if we're going to do that, then you really need to know what those responsibilities are. And frankly, sometimes, at least in my experience, is depending on the size of the game or the magnitude of the game. You know, when I first started officiating collegiate basketball, and they assigned me my first conference game. Are you ready for this subject? It was a Southwest Conference. Rice and Texas Tech. Texas Tech got Rice. Used to test. And some guy, yeah, I look like this guy without the beard and no glasses. But he, uh, some guy couldn't get in with the bad weather from Chicago. So a guy calls me and says, can you get to Houston to do the Texas Tech at Rice game? It starts at 1 o'clock, so it's going to be all TD, blah, blah, blah. It was one year I refereed the Southwest Conference before turning into the Big 12. And so hell, I let that night. I think I had a high school game in Cal- where at, at the game. Friday night's right, the high school's going to go up. Frank, and I'm all, I don't think I said Right. But was I ready to meet the crew chief? Absolutely not. I'm not ready to meet crew chief. I didn't want that responsibility. It was going to be TV and the monitor. Oh, I'm gonna, uh, now, we're not going to get into that. Just, but you've got to understand, to be the referee, to be designated as crew chief. Uh, why do you find all the crew there? And their responsibilities come with being crew chief. Do you want to be the arc? I'm going to talk to you about what that means. Okay, I'm going to tell you what that means. It's more than just play calling ability. It's more than having a relationship with this coach. And it's more than that. Why is it than that? So, Gritchie, you also hear the terminology the head referee, the lead official, all the interchangeable terminology, right? Yeah, and let, you'll actually hear people that stand to well, you're the head official. Happens to me. You can change that call, but no. I'm going to tell you when the lead or the head official or the crew chief or the referee and we'll test the change of call. But we all change call. I go and I live and die with what my partner's calls are. And I support that. You want breaking too. And the crew chief has my little door. Yeah. So let's just, let's just for a moment Consider that. Oh, you know what? We'll do the killing more. We'll do the killing more play. This actually happened. This recently. Might have been session 98. God, I was carrying them. It was Memorial Boys playing my favorite team in the Real Randy Valley, Nicky Rowe. Time they played on their team. Listen, hey, everybody know. We were Nicky Rowe, Memorial. And Memorial is blowing Nicky Rowe. I was enjoying this game. They are just killing Nicky Rowe. Just killing. Well, Seattle's old crew. Were you on the crew? No, it was Kelly Moore. No. It was Alex. Or what's in Alex? Alex and Alex. Yeah, but I'm the, the Matt. No, Matt. No, 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 
No, what is that? He's using me. You in the green team? Uh, yes, sir. All right. This guy. And I'm gonna, this is all about final authority. And real life example. Rose losing by 20. Okay. Memorial Kip, they're kind of doing the Phil Ford, North Carolina thing for Lydia, then the little Phil Ford is fine. Kind of like my kids, who's Joe Frazier. Who'd be wet? So they're, they're doing the little stall thing. They're up by 20. There's no shot clock in high school basketball. So they just kind of pass it around, right? What does Roll want to do? Foul, stop the clock. They need the ball. They need to shoot. They, not, they need to windle down that in 20. And we're down by under five. Fourth quarter. So here's the Roll kid dribbling. Okay. Uh, or the, the Memorial kid dribbling. A Roll defender comes up and fouls him with, a, with an arm bar. And just shoves him, reaches in. Reaches it back, right? But I didn't hear a whistle. There's a referee right there where Kelly Moore is at. Trailer, Ben Sight. Okay, so now the kid turns, and as he turns, the roll kid grabs his jersey. Literally just, right, you see the shirt go like this, grabs the jersey, okay? And now we have a foul. And so now the calling official is about to do his thing, but for whatever reason, he starts, he, like, his partners are trying to get his attention and they run towards the calling official at the 28 foot line area. Okay. So this is all happening back side. There's a bench, the bench, bench. It did us trail the sitters over here. He makes the call in here. I, instead of turning to report the foul, these officials start running towards him and they huddle somewhere in here. All three officials huddling. Okay? Crew chiefs, when you feel the need to have a conference with all of the crew, in other words, all three of us come together like this, guess what the crew chief does? Well, hang on, Kelly. Hang on, Freddie. We'll conference in a moment. Send the pledge to the benches. That's the crew chief's responsibility. As a game awareness responsibility. We will conference on the league. Send them to their benches. All right? That was the first thing they did incorrect. They had a huddle here between the three of them. I don't care if it's 30 seconds or 30 minutes. These kids are at their benches not just wandering around and talking trash because Roll was frustrated and getting embarrassed by Memorial. I think that might be a little rivalry. And they, I don't know, felt like a little rivalry again. Roll didn't like the way they were getting beat that many ways. This gets better. This gets better, all right? So that's point one. Crutcher, send them to their benches. Now we conference. Now where do we conference? We don't conference here. We conference over here conference over here. We conference as far away from these guys. Let them do their coaching adjustments, whatever. Let them focus on that and we focus on what do we got here? Okay? I don't know what the discussion was. I think I do know what the discussion was. Because all of a sudden, the calling official, who I told you had an arm bar foul, should have had a first foul, quick whistle. But waited until now the pull is Charlotte. These guys fall here and they convince this calling official that's an intentional foul for grabbing the shirt. Okay. Now, if I'm the leap and I'm the crew chief, I'm refereeing on leap. Here's the best. Is the best. I'm the leap. Well, actually, you were on this side. Lee was up here. Bank side. Trails over there. Or Adrian is. I'm the lead, right? I may be refereeing my primary, right? Now I'm looking at these Ching young men right here. I'm looking at these young men right here. But I can see it. I can see Adrian. Called peripheral vision. It's called peripheral vision. I can see Adrian. Raise your hand, Adrian. I can see that. But I'm looking here. I'm looking at Lydia. Raise your hand, Adrian. I can see that. So I'm refereeing over the top of my eyes. And what my, I'm not ball watching. But I'm officiating over the top of my eyes because why? I may be seeing the ball move, 
from this side of the floor to where Carlos is sitting, and therefore I need to close down. And then I'm going to rotate. So I'm referee looked up my eyes. So I have a feel with what's going on out there. And because I've refereed 29 years at the Division One level, I feel that there's probably going to be a takeaway foul. I can hear the Nicky Roll coach says, Ballo, Ballo, stop the clock. I understand. I have basketball IQ. I understand what the offense is trying to do. They're trying to stall the game. And I understand the teeth is trying to stop the heat. So I might just take a glance out there. And if I were glanced out there, I would have seen that arm bar. And now I, I'm, and I'm waiting. I, oh, now you didn't call a foul in the pool. And, and so now we're going to have this little call about going to potential on the crew sheet right there, ladies and gentlemen. It's when the final authority comes out. I'm going to go, what, 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 what do you got, Kim? Well, Ruben, I have a, I have a foul. You ever have any intentional foul? Do you need to see the guy grab the shirt? No, I had a first foul on the arm board. I'm the referee now. I'm asking him for information. Now I'm asking my U2 or whoever was seven. What did you see? I saw the grab of the shirt. That's all you saw? Yeah. Okay. I'm the final authority. Gentlemen, we're going to go with the common foul. Report a common foul and stay away from the sidelines. And then I'm going to go back to my position in league. You're going to report the foul, arm bar, one and one, out of bounds, whatever, two, we're all 10, whatever, right? And we play on. Now, what happened? And so, so, point one, you're going to caucus, center of the bench. Point two, right? We have a conversation. You ask your U1 and you ask your U2, what do you have? Give me information. What did you What did you see? You two, give me information, and then I, as the crew chief, have final authority saying I could support this, or I can support that, or this is going to be how we're going to manage this, because I'm going to have to write the game report. I'm the one that's going to have to deal with the bear, and we know that the bear is the bear is over here that you rotate. Okay, so here's what happens. This dude turns and goes intentional. And coach, my favorite coach from the league he wrote, whose name I won't mention, go by seeing today, is standing like this. Right here. Watching all this at the 20 for okay. And frankly, I'm waiting to watch him block. He's kind of like Mike Tyson. He can block it. He can go. He can go. They're going to do nothing but just standing there like this. He's not happy because he's getting blown out by 20. Right. And so I'm going, okay, you report that intentional. And we're in two, we know all of the intent, but we know by rule what the intentional needs, right? Two shots, the ball, they get the ball, point of the intentional foul, right? And they're all by 20. So now we go 22, we go 24, we go 25, uh, right? So you're adding insult to injury, skin awareness, right? Why not just go with that first foul, right? Okay, so, and Brown still is now in the house, okay? So he reports the intentional foul. And for whatever reason, ladies and gentlemen, he turns around and reports to the, to the table, who's the scorer, reports intentional foul, but, and I don't know why he starts walking towards the bear. Ooh. And this is where I come up with mine. They love this one. Why are we poking the bear? Why are we poking the thing? The bear was just fine. But now you're going to go all in there and try to rationalize with a coach that we know can go when he's down by 20, now could be 22, when we know he's also going to use possession of the basketball because you went intentional and that team's going to get the ball back. And you're going to go over there and tell him what? Have a nice date? With my wife, could you coach Chichel Plan? No. Incorrect. Don't poke the bear. Stay away from the bear on foul calls like that. Those are emotion. Get the, get the, the whole gamut. I'm just giving you the whole gamut, man. Right? Right. So hang on, Bill. I'm going to let you, I'm gonna let you explain it all to me. Okay, so I saw a lot of things that were flawed in the execution of that play situation. Right? 
And I'm, I'll think you were on the call that day. And we had technical difficulties that day. We didn't get to break down the void. Or that was a different game, right? Oh, that was this one. Yeah. Your case. Your case. Um, so the final authority on that play should have been the crew chief. The crew chief, when they came together, should have said, I see the, I see the score. I see the game clock. I know because I'm thinking like the offense and I'm refereeing the defense. What the defense was trying to do was to take away Val. We're going to go with the comment, Val. We're not going to go with Tish. You have final door. Right? And you tell your you won. You tell this guy, the trail. If it's Alex. Yes. I take responsibility for this, Alex. Call the comment, Val. Report it. Stay away from the sidelines. And let's admit to the one-on-one. Okay. And maybe he misses the birth one. I mean, just eight to money. Okay. The referee has that final authority. And it's the referee that has the experience, that has a feel for the game, that has the best intentions of how we're going to manage the game. We'll get into it in a second. And that's a perfect 10 of a real live play that we just broke down in session. Carlos, what was it, 90 or 97? 90. 90. Carlos keeps track. That's what 90 guys do. They keep track of them. <laughs> okay, Kelly, now you, give me your version. Because you work. You were this guy. This was, oh, you were, where were you? Oh, wait. This was Kelly. I mean, they both, they both went to him. I was like, wow, what are they doing? Now, you, you, you pick up the story, you know. I kicked it. I'm not going to lie. I kicked it because I didn't clear it. You what? You kicked it? Yeah, I kicked that. Okay. Let's change terminology. Would it be a referee? You use the correct terminology. We made an incorrect decision. We didn't kick the call. We don't kick calls. We make incorrect decisions. Okay? They're not good calls. They're not bad calls. They're not makeup calls. There's correct calls. There's incorrect calls. There are no calls that are incorrect. All right? And then no calls correct. So you can bet. And they're at a place for review. We don't kick calls. And we don't make up calls. We don't have makeup calls. We don't do and one. We don't say and one. We just say count. We don't say right here. No, we say black. We don't say battle way. No, we say white. I'm sorry. I get a little excited. But the terminology, terminology, right? I can assure you, if you want to be a referee, you will learn to use the right terminology. Coach by rule, but your credibility would go up when you start talking like that at any level. Beyond just running four. Like these two cats right here, man. They're like horses. Like race horses. They run like a race horse deer. They run more like deer. The way they were running last night, it's like me. You know, no. When they're that dumb and you have the wheels, show them that you've got the wheels. Sprint from trail to lead. And make an impression. People. That this guy can run. Yeah, I'd have very good judgment for his headings were not very good, but he could run. Right? And they should leave only one day to press run, right, Kelly. Tell me about your kick call. <laughs> I made an incorrect decision. Oh, first of all, I should have cleared the players. No one. He's absolutely right there. Oh, as far as the comment foul, I didn't see that comment foul. I didn't see that first all bar. I saw the king. I saw the second there, the second contact. Nelson across it, Sidney saw that pool as well and so in reality i could have honestly stayed away from it because i'm way over here he had a better look at it even though it is on our side i can have secondary coverage through here i could help him out of that play but nelson had the best look at it because the play if i'm not mistaken he turned he curled and then nelson could fully see that kid grab it from behind so and lee I could have only went and gave information if they asked, but as a crew chief, as our could have sent them to their is that they clear it, talk about it, and mm-hmm. you know, not could have, should have, should have, should have. And that's just automatic. Whenever you're going to have a hug with all three official, now it's a different thing if it's just all Sia and me. And I got Kelly over there, he can watch the play. Yep. But if it's all three official, 
for whatever the play situation is, and that's probably going to be an unusual situation. Send them to their benches. And that way you don't have to worry about it. We send them to their bench. That's the protocol. And the referee has that responsibility. We want to huddle, all three of us, send them to their benches. I'll just tell them. I'll tell my crew, send them to their benches and then come back to me. And then I'll start moving somewhere over here. I want to get away from the sideline where the coaches. I don't want them to hear what we're talking about. I don't want anybody to hear what we're talking about. You'll see, you'll see some guys talking like this. You know, like, uh, and they don't want any read lips. But the technology we have now, they can reach your stuff. So anyway, so Kelly getting out, you know, okay. So, like, so he said he didn't see Bill, right? The calling official has to have the courage and the conviction to tell his crew chief. Crew chief, I have a first foul. And then they just heard, who's that? Oh, question. Okay. What was the main reason for you guys to get together? Did he ask for help? Or you guys automatically went and, and talked to him? Great question. Kelly? The, t- the, the feel of that game is, even though it was a blowout, it was getting testy. We could tell about attitudes and whatnot. Bro was, it wasn't memorial. It was uh, pretty was Mikel not? It was Mac Hot. Oh, my team. Be- yeah. They were like, what was it? Or you disagree is the best. Uh, he won his little bit. I think we all. Bill, 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 to win. Bill, to win. I'm to read three. Bill, to win. When Bill, 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 oh, Bill, to win. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Honestly, the way that the game was going in the field and how it was, and going into that game, we had pre gamed. We thought it was going to be a lot closer than that. We weren't expecting Mack to come out and punch him at the bats. And they did. They smacked him from beginning to end. And the way the game was going, and you know how both coaches are, it was just a feel of let's stick to by wound on this one versus, and that's what my thought process was. I really didn't, and my second mistake was I should have looked at the score and how everything was. It would be fine because Coach Floyd is just going to say whatever he's going to say. We all know that. Mm-hmm. Ryan is going to be smart, smart Alec, whether he's up 30 or down 30. At that point in time, I should have taken into consideration, you know what, let's just go with Common and just tell players, hey, make a play on the ball. Coach, make sure that they make a play on the ball. And I could have easily went by Coach Floyd and said, we're going to go with Common on this. Yeah, I, and Coach, by rule, yes. But, Cubs, you're up 22. I would, we all would pull out all in an open wood. Well, beyond the hall was when they went to go poke the fair. <laughs> yeah. And then Coach Yebra had been well behaved that it's our game. Unbelievably. He he was taking it. He went <laughs> home from in, at my third quarter, he was done. And y'all, we all know how he can be. That entire game. He was. I was even shocked that sub calls out but over at him like Oh no. Well Drew knows it. And that was it. That was it. But when Alex walked over to him, I was just like, he's not even asking a question. He knows. Coach knows. He knew by rule what we had to give on that on that one. But we probably could have downgraded that, to be honest. Now, what if the U1 suggests, like, hey, Kelly, like, I know you're the hard wood comma, and well, like, this is a common problem. Yes, yes, yes. We, the U, just because I have the final responsibility, and I'm the crew chief, and I'm the thief, doesn't mean that I'm all pounds are on my body and everything is what I say. You as a younger, less experienced official said, you guys will face this. They don't face this coming, you know, and they have to have the courage. And, and you're going to tell your R, this is what I want to do, right? And I'll take responsibility for that, right? You always got to listen and take it in. But you're going to have some R to say, no, we're going to go with the intention. Yes. Okay, fine. But I'm giving you my opinion now. And you have to have that, uh, you have to have that courage, right? Crew chief, I respect that, but my opinion is I want to go with the first bound, you know, given the score. Give, give him some, you know, why, right? It was a first foul, we're a 20 point game, we haven't poked the bear, the bears, but whatever, however you want us to play. But you, you have to communicate with the crew chief in a way that he takes that information. You know what? That's a good point, partner. Yeah, we're going to go with the common fact. And that's a crew chief you want that's willing to listen to his you one or his you two. You know, and that, by the way, that's the first thing I do. When we have a play like this or whatever, I'll run to my crew and I'll say, 
Or what did you, what did you see? Okay. Okay. Thank you. What did you see? I get their input and then I'll, I'll usually use terminology like I can support what you're saying. Or we're not going to do that, gentlemen. We're going to do this because by rule, we've got to do it this way. And I'll take full res I'll always end by saying, I take responsibility for this, right? It's not going to be on you. It's going to be on me. I make the final decision and I put that in the gate. So you're absolutely correct, sir. And that can the courage and vision to tell your free chief what you saw, what you had, what you think is in the best interest that game at that moment, right? Yes, sir. So, so absolutely right with, with Ruben, what Ruben just said, guys. And I know I'm talking to some of you guys that I know for a while. You say, hey, Juan, well, I'm, I'm with a R that is very stubborn and whatever they say it's going to be. You just give the information, guys. And, you know, you let it, let it go, right? But with that one, Ruben, uh, Alex, on that video, he should have done it a little bit quicker. The, way, the reason why he went over to the bench was because that we were at five miles. So he should have done it and said, hey, coach, he's got five and walked away. Or it got tired from where he was at. Yeah. And used his voice. Yeah. So, but he stayed there until yeah. he replaced up there. And that's where. Yeah. Carlos, thank you for mentioning that. That's another field. And that's another coach here to my sport. I got to feel that the calling of fishing, who just decided to go from common to intentional, should probably stay away from the bear, notwithstanding the, the player bound out. I had to. I had to recognize that as the crew chief for the sake of the game, for the sake of my teammates. What was his name, Alex? Alex, F. Alex, go opposite. I'll tell Coach Yerba. Is that his name? Yerba. 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 I'm going to go tell Coach Yerba <laughs> that his player has five fouls and is disqualified. Let me do that. Okay. And you go opposite. They, I, I forgot about that. Yeah, that's why. Right? He went from to a hot bay. I mean, that's hot mess, right? So anyway, so let's get into this. Thank you for sharing that, Kelly. Yes. That, that, that's why I watch videotape. That's why we watch videotape. That was a very good play to break down. Yes, sir. Wait, one more. Uh, yes, sir. They happen to be also. How many, how many shots? Uh, on the intention? On the intentional. Two? No. Okay. Now they also have a one on one. Dummy. It's just one foul. And it's the intentional. They didn't know what you yet come. If we're going to be calm, it might have been one on one or I don't know if y'all were 10 or whatever. Mm -hmm. So they got to go. Them coaches will be on the middle. They took four shots. No, no, no. The one, one foul. And it's quite valid. He's quite, quite. And now you're talking about calling secure. <laughs> they haven't had it out. They have had. And the guy hadn't reached. <laughs> so let's just kind of uh, highlight. So, no. Mm -hmm. Okay. Final Thort. There's a good example of Final Thort. And that means he's taking his, he or she is taking responsibility. That means final endorsement. The vibe at the final endorsement. All right. We manage the crew. Behind this is this little script that Burke came up with in terms of how we best manage the crew. If I'm the R on an assignment, Burke outlined a little script about what you should be setting, and we're all operating the text messaging now, right? But it's all text with the tents. There was a time clip when I first started, guys would send postcards. Like I get booty flip saying, I'm going to this game, I'm flying in, I got the room, but it's like the postcard. I was sending post. He went. And we just do a text message, right? And my and then there's a script behind here. So if managing the fishing crew is you're responsible for that crew. I want to know how you're getting there. I want to know what time you're getting there. Right? I want to know, you know, confirm with me that you've got the same assignment I do, and we're in, you know, whatever Panther nation, whatever, right? You communicate with your crew, right? He also has a script on here. It's a little different from us. It's a, it's a text message to the head coach. Oh, let's say the name's here, right? So you will be sending a coach to coach. Uh, what's her name? Vila? Vino. Vino. Coach Vino. This is Ruben Ramos. I will be the referee or pre chief, however you want to phrase it, for your game against Harland. Our schedule reflects a seven o'clock start. The crew will arrive no later than 6 p.m. Look forward to working with game. If you have any questions, let us change, let us know at this number. Right? So two communications. One to the, now we, we would we would communicate with game man, not the coach. And but Bert said that's not 
a violation of the code of ethics or not we we don't need to get cuts but well some do and I'm going to get in. That's another course for another day of Jed Biden. Referees like to communicate with coaches. It's just a conflict of interest, you know, during the season. So there's a script mine here for, for y'all to just take a picture of it. Now, I'll show you that at the end, Liz. But you're officiating. You're, you're, you're responsible for that curve. If the guy doesn't show up or she doesn't show up, what? It's on me. And by the way, I want you to respond to that text message. Confirmed, received, some kind of affirmation that you got my text message. Don't ignore it. Because if you don't respond to it, I can send it to you. OJ, like a bad man, I keep sending it to them. Oh, until I get a response. At that four day communication and just talk about that. Enforcing the rule. Come on. Enforcing the rules. All of us, whether you're the referee, the what you to should have rules knowledge. Get into the rule book. I love it. When guys tell me these camps ain't have rule book. You know, now these look pretty clean. Who was it that I was looking at? Was it yours? What did I tell you? What did I tell you last night? Tell, tell them why I told you last night. You lay your way Say it Say it loud. Say loud. In perversion. See how they can't find their voice? See how they can't find their voices, young guys? They're like, <laughs> here's my, here's my what Mr. Ronald told me last night is he knows when somebody is in the case book or the rules book or the mechanics book because the edges of the book are frayed. Some people need to little tags, like little, little yellow things, right? Points of emphasis or whatever. But when you see a rule book, that's that way they see the perfect. Means maybe it's me. And the robot should look at him. My, 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 my point is get in the rule book. And the official that's the crew chief has final authority on a Kajun King of rule. So you got no rules. If you're going to be the crew chief or the R, there's a assumption that you know the rules, right? So all of us need to get in the rule book. If you're the referee, you definitely want to know rules, right? Every season, just start going section by section. You know, just dedicate yourself to reading the rule book 30 minutes a day, every day. I've been doing it for 29 years. I still keep going to that thing. I still should going to buy. Never really kind of stood that. And then I go to the case book, try to foot it with the rule book, thing consistent. I said another to the doll. I didn't mean afterwards. But, and then, all right. And then, of course, the disputes. We just had an example of dispute. Right the referee settles it. These two guys came running out. Running out. Your question was good. Like, why did y'all go running out? But, I mean, literally, they just came right on top of it and convinced him it was an intentional foul. Why? Well, but the referee disputes that the referee settled them. We're going to be this, period. Because we're going to run the game this way. And we don't want to poke the bear. Um, Proceed smoothly. By that I mean run the game. Run the game. It's like the coordinator that I work for, he'll just say, you know, they'll call me, get this game. It's going to be high level, high intensity, ESPN broadcast, Gonzaga, whatever, OMJ, right? Run the game, Ribbon. Run the game. What is it talking about? He wants it to proceed smoothly. No issue. I, we have some text after every game, the Division One level. Okay. Final score, blah, blah. Home team takes the win. No issue, period. Have a nice day for the assignment. Have a nice day. I don't want a text message that says, at 318, they have technical foul on a Gonzaga player for MFV, U2. Coach T went nuts. We had to assess a technical foul on him at 319. No, that's not smooth. And we're going to have games where we're going to have issues, right? But the referee works hard to try to make sure the game goes smoothly. I'm the leader and the crew kind of tries to keep up. The leader to tell me the speed of the pack. They need light sample. Right. Technical fouls. Technical fouls are emotional. Right? Technical foul. You know, 
Tango fell, man. And it's not ban. It was a ban. <laughs> Stuff out. Stuff out. And then, uh, boom, boom, boom. Foul call, right? It's foul. It's a foul call. It's a technical foul. Stop the clock. Have a technical foul on the head coach. Compose yourself. Technical foul. Red team coach. Front sporting conduct. That's a plate them. So, very low. If I say technical foul, front sporting conduct, the coach. All right. Calmly, confidently, it's just another foul, right? Don't get too exciting. Same thing on plates. 23, uh, what was that changing? Okay, hang on. I have a technical foul in 23 blue. Profanity on the court directed in addition. Put it in the book. Lemon and tea. And class 8 technical foul. Keep going. But you're recording the technical foul. It's a class 8 technical foul. That's a personal foul against 23 blue. It's a team foul on the blue team. Right? And they're going to get to shoot. Right? I mean, you got to go through the whole thing so that they put it all in the book and write down the time. So I'm going to put it in my team. My point is that all technical fouls are managed by the R. If I'm the R and Carlos is my U1 and Carlos has a technical foul, I just see Carlos go, boo, I see Carlos go, ban. I'm probably going to run over to Carlos. I'm the R. I'm going to assume my center is going to watch. I'm going to say, hey, watch the players. I'm going to run over. I'm not going to sprint. I'm not going to hit him. I'm just going to walk briskly over to Carlos. I go, party, what you got? Run it by him. And Carlos says, 23 just MF mean, okay? I say tech go found make sure you record the whole thing, right? And tell him to write down the time a little bit spin for me because I'm on the yeah. yeah. Trying to calm Carlos down, allowing him to reconstruct what just happened. So that when he goes over there, he's confident, he's clear, he's concise with his communication. Right? If I'm the R, that's what I did. Because I help manage technical facts. Is it class A? Is it class D? Is it administrative that go out there to? And I'm responsible. I got to know that. I got to know what my partner is doing. Uh, there, you know, I always have to go to the high school federation thing. I wish Kevin Moore's in here, but somebody in here can correct me if I'm incorrect. Not that I'm a chicken thing. I'm incorrect on anything that my life different from high school. So I go to the high school federation here, right? And the high school official has specific sauce space, and then some of those teams about game management. We talk about game manager, how do you run the game, how do you manage the game, you're the game manager, right? Game manager, and responsible for all, everything. You're the manager, you're, you're the gal, you're the gal, you're the person, you was, okay. So just know that. Pre-game dudes, referees, crew teams lead the pre-game conversation. And pre-game, constant, pre-game conference. To make sure what? We're all on the same page. We're like-minded. And, and guys, don't get too hung up on a two-page front and back. You know, Nike swoops up here, right? Carlos, Nike, pre-game. Okay. Now, you've got to talk about three to five things. Three to five things in five, maybe two minutes. But those things, those situations, those play situations, those positioning discussions, those methods already used to communicate with the bear are important in a game, right? So if I'm the crew chief, I'm the R, I'm going to look at Matt Gallant, Matt Kine, Bulldog playing the Nicky Rowe, what are Nicky Rowe? Warriors. 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 And I'm going to look at their schedule. I'm going to look at what their record is. We already know about probably both coaches have been there for a while, so we know their personalities. We probably know if one of the two teams has a high-level player or two or more. Are they on a winning streak? Are they on a losing streak? I'm doing that discovery. I'm doing that due diligence. Because I want to have a feel for it. Yeah, so some kid for Nicky Rowe just scored 30 on Tuesday where on Friday magazine. I'm going to tell the kid, hey, man, do what you did on Tuesday, and that way I'm going to put air in my whistle. That kid's eyes will just light up. No. These things get on the side of the players. But my point here on where was like pregame, pregame, pregame. These are the topics, right? Making rollers on a bike in using script. Conch, yep, but I might be a little bit on pins and beetles tonight. So let's give them a little bit of roll. 
but don't let him cross over, right? So we're going to talk about coaching, okay? Uh, Mack High likes to press in the backcourt for the whole game. So let's be ready for press coverage. If you're my center, don't go anywhere, right? If you're my center, right? We referee the defense, right? We referee the defense. Lead, Satan, trail, all within the hole, and we got pressure all up in the backcourt, okay? We will talk in the pregame if we know there's a team that likes to press it, right? Center, ball goes in the hole, just backed out and hold. Why? Because you've got everything on this side of the floor. And I'll talk about a Delta team right there. That's your call, not my call. I got this side of the floor. Okay? Oh, I trail. <laughs> Let's dive up down here and stand on the end line. When there's 10 players in the backcourt, where are you going? I need you here for that lob crash run over or that lob walk run over. I need you here. I'm down here. There's nobody in the front court, man. There's 10 players here. We referee the defense. So I'll be talking the pregame about press coverage. That's item two. Item three. How about this one? Player, 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 one guard. We're going this way. Okay. How many times have you seen this one? High head streets. They're all doing it. High head street. All of a sudden, you see this big guy come running out this way to set a screen for this guy. All right? I'm going to talk about a two referee play. One on this screen, I've got this look, and you've got the back side look. It's a two referee play. Let us not miss illegal screens, and let's make that a two referee play so we don't miss either the illegal movement. You know, whatever, hit, check, whatever, or the backside hold or grab or wrap around. It's a two referee play. Let's not miss any new screens. And remember, I'll tell the truth. There's got to be contact on any new screen. You know, I could be like this, and the guy goes around me, but it's not a legal screen. Even though I'm out of my, I'm out of my, out of my torso, right? I mean, this is the right one. screen, sometimes they cover. I'm out here. And he clips you with the yes, he evil screen. If you're outside and you're right, it's an evil screen. But if the guy goes around and there's no contact, that's not an evil screen. There's got to be contact. Okay. So we'll talk about screens. Oops. We're going to talk about screens. And then we're going to talk about protecting shears. Okay. Protecting shears. Three point shot to the corn. I'm the setter, right? Hopefully the lead is flows down to here. It's a quick shot, so he's not gonna rotate, right? We don't rotate. What do we not rotate? Quick chunks. You remember? You remember? You remember? The widow just last night. Drive, drive. Quick drive to the basket. Quick shot, slip, skip, yeah. pass, jump, shot, right? And then of course we want to make sure the trail is in the front court before you rotate over, or you leave this whole side of the floor empty. This guy leaves, and this guy's down here. So we do not rotate. Open. But I don't have to say that in the pregame. We sure already know that. All I want to talk about is protecting shooters from the start to the finish of the game. It usually happens on three. Ladies and gentlemen, to referee the three or to referee shooters, you must referee up and down. Up, train your arms. It's up and down. Up and down, right? And then you see the defender, right? If you're refereeing the shooter, refereeing the big fence, shooter goes up, down. Is the defender moving into the shooter? That's illegal contact. Foul, right? But guess what now they're doing? All these players are kicking their legs out and creating the contact, even though the defender's trying to get out of the way and falls into the guy's feet, and we're calling the foul on the defender. So don't let him pull you. That's an offensive foul. See that guy kicked. Give you And by the way, we should know that. We should know that about players. They had that tendency as we're watching video tape, right? Up, Jay. Say 23 last kick is to you, 23 remember the last his legs out. That's be mindful. I might even say it in the freaking comments. We talk about freaking comments the other day, and girls, what do you say in freaking comments? I was like, hey, tell 23 not to kick his legs out, or we're on then. Well, tell them, Captain, right? Pre bit tib of fishing. Right? Back to back to this, right? 
to your referee up, down, right? Clear, they clear, right? There's no contact, everything's good. Now your eyes go to weak side rebound cook, right? So what I'll say in the pregame is let us protect shoots up and down. No, the left hand ones from the right hand ones. That pan of ones right in. All right. Doesn't take much, right? Doesn't take much. Red 33 hit. Good shot. Right? So I'm about that for you. Uh, and then, you know, we might talk a little bit about managing the emotions of the game. Coach, personnel, and that. That's it. But you got to have a conversation. Block charge. That's the other one. Y'all like block charge. Block charge, right? What do we say to them? Does the defender establish legal guarding position? You got to face my opponent. You got two feet down. Pick. This is initial legal guarding position. The block charge call shouldn't be that challenge. I'll talk about that in the pregame in this context, right? Let's get a good look. It's not guess. Referee the defense. And remember, he can move obliquely. Is obliquely is what the word obliquely means. Or he can move back. Take contact after it initiating the initial the bar in position, right? Can't go forward, right? Can't, you know, and then that's a lot. Or I can be moving, and, and I, I'm not, I never said, I never had initial and move. MP on graph, but we involved a lot of those plays right out in 99 session. We'll talk about the block charge primarily in this context, like minded. We have bang bang offense. Over here, we go bang, bang, it's offense. Don't go bang, bang, offense, bang, bang, block. What? Well, it was the same play, Ruben. How could we have an offensive foul there and this dude called a block over here? I have a hard time explaining that, Coach. Because why? One of the bigger things that coaches will throw at us is we're inconsistent. You're inconsistent. It was the same play. Same play. So they have a block charge run over. Look for watch charge one over here. He made the same call. Like mine. Got a hand check here. We're in a hand checks here. Hand checks are north and south primarily. East and west call hands. Hands. Say hands. Get them on. East and west. But they're going north and south and they're hand checking. They're calling the foul and showing the hand check. But I have hand checks here. We're hand checks on the other side. We're going to be consistent tonight, ladies and gentlemen, of my crew. Let's work hard and being consistent and be like minded on everything we do. Post play, rough post play, right? We're going to be consistent with our call. So let's have some pre games done. Got to go, you got to go. I know you guys have beams, lots of beams. Out of reassuring. Let's talk about communication. Hey, I'm going to give you an example of communication. It happened to you. Okay. So uh, we had. Uh, this is totally. They look for the backs again. I remember now. But we had the communication. Oh, I don't know it was. Let in jerk deal. Was your deal. And kids driving to the basket. It's hit. As he, has he, has he started his habitual shoot? The rule book, I think, says habitual shooting motion. Okay. How many of you play the game? Raise your hands. Okay. So you do, you know, when you strike, strike, try shoot the ball. Right? You know, when you started that movement, habitual shooting motion. Right? I'm not dribbling. I'm not shooting. Right? But sometimes it's, it's, a, it's a foul and foul. Right? Was it me pull or what? Not that, that, that hurt. Some really us. Was it the foul in four, the shot? Or was it on the trot? Right? I think you had, was you? And somebody, it was a great question, right? Like, so how can we help? See, you are on it, right? How do we help? Right? Okay. If I'm not sure, I see the foul, I hear the. But, but I would say anything. And I'll see my trail. We're on the same side of the floor. All right. I'm going to run towards ICL. And I'm going to say, ICL, what do you think? And OCL being a good partner, a good team, says, Ruben, I have it before the show. And he says it, but just like that, he says it. Ruben, before the show. No. <laughs> Ruben, I had the wood show. Did I? And thank you. Okay. Red 33. Hit before the shot was going out of bounds. Thank you, party. Because I wasn't sure. It was too quick, right? Or I might go to OCS or OCL. I got it on the trine. And OCS says, 
I concur. Thank you. Red 33, hit. We're shooting two. Okay? So we'll talk about being good teammates. Right? How about this one? The center trip. And this is going to happen. Right? The ball shoots out of bounds right here. And I mean, like, boom, boom, boom. Right? Sometimes the lead doesn't know. And don't guess. Don't guess. Right? So what do you do? How many times have we gone over this, Carlos? You walk briskly down the, the baseline and pick this guy up or her up. Your eyes meet as you're walking briskly. And all they're doing is, okay, so that's the weak side, right? And I'm trying to teach you guys to let them right in. So if ball goes out and bounds that way, Bassett's here. I'm going to leave. Sarah's over there with that gentleman's. Boom. I stop the clock, ball went out and bounce. Boom. And I start walking, I'm looking at it. You guess what you're going to It's points. He had seen the end of the cat. It's going to quite again. Red. Do it just like that, nobody even knows. Nobody even knows. That's right. you. <laughs> But you know, don't, don't run onto the floor asking him, or don't be going, <laughs> just stop the clock. Don't guess. Now I'm looking for a or white. Right? There's a, so, so we'll talk about, generally speaking, how can we be helpful to each other as teammates on calls like that, on calls to the basket, or the trying, on the trying, right? So we'll talk about that in free game. Any questions I'm bringing to it? Now get yourself 45 minutes, 30 or 45 minutes for a review. I know you guys are there on jobs and you might not, but try to get to a game where you have a 30 minute conversation about those kinds of things. And the referee leads that discussion. He engages the crew. What do you think? How do you want to handle hand checks tonight? I mean, I'll actually put yellow official on the spot. That means I'm going to embarrass them a little bit. I don't want them to talk, but they're just sitting there. How did he want to eat? Why are you laughing, Swend? Subtitle is just like frozen. <laughs> okay, it's okay. It's not never to leave, but it's just coach. Yeah. <laughs> All right, good. And this, eh? uh, conflict resolution. You know, guys, I, I can't tell you how to effectively resolve conflict other than we all have our own style, right? But the one thing that we want to think about as the crew sheet is when emotions go up and you know when your partner's emotions go up because referees get mad. You try to bring them down, right? You try to bring them back, right? And, and how do I do that? You know, I'll, I'll recognize that one of my lesser experienced officials is having, you know, whatever issue or frustrated or he may have made an incorrect call and he's frustrated with The guy makes a call, we make a double whistle, right? I'm going to put guys a partner, you take and now we're just to free those and I'll go, that was a great call. That was a good call. That was a solid call. That was a correct call. We needed that part. That was a good I'm lifting them. I'm lifting them. Right? I'm lifting them. So uh, conflict resolution sometimes has to do with when there is conflict, and there will be. Right? Remember, the coaches can ask us questions. They want to make a statement. Just listen, okay? I hear you. Is there a question? I, no, I wouldn't say but you're waiting for a question. We respond to questions. And sometimes silence cannot be misquoted. So maybe it's an opportunity for me just to listen to what he's saying. I hear what you're saying, coach. I'll communicate that to the crew at halftime or on the next day of ball, the next time. Okay. Conflict resolution. We all have to learn that. But the referee is primarily responsible for resolving conflict during the game between the crew and certainly with the benches and with the plates. All right. We are talking about technical fouls. Just know, okay. <laughs> Again, just like I said, and don't be too excited on technical foul. It's a technical foul. Now, if you're going to eject someone, don't just a little pick your shoulder. Mm -hmm. Right? Technical foul, head coach, that's the second unsporting technical foul. The coach is down disqualified. And and then you just, and I don't know if you all do it here, we have that security escort, Coach, on game administrators, escorts, whatever the case is, pretty 
point is that the, if you have an ejection or a disqualification, don't get too sight, as they say in some of the, don't get too sight. And it's just a disqualification. And my rule, this is why this player is being disqualified. He punched the kid in the face. Right? That's a flagrant foul. I'm disqualifying this player from the contact. Okay? So don't get, it's a technical foul and ejection is just part of the rule work. Right? Are we, are we all wrong? Time? Are we wrong? Um, you know, hot management, y'all don't have a shot clock. One day you will. Before these guys stop refereeing, they will have a shot clock in high school basketball. But the, but they, you know, the, the, the referee is responsible for kind of managing the clock in terms of are they starting it on time? Are they stopping it on time? Right? Is this shot clock operator on his or her toes tonight? Right? So I'm always mindful. You know, I, I used to always try to get in the habit, like as soon as I put the ball in and chop time, you know, chop time, my, my eyes would just go up to the clock, 12 and divide. Okay. It's still on 12 and divide, boo, 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 boo. Take five seconds off the clock. Right? Just train your eyes as the referee can have responsibility to ensure the game clock is operating properly. That can't be meaningful at a one point game and you're at Panther Stadium or Panther Nation, right? And the clock operator happens to have a Panther Nation shirt on. And they don't start the clock on time because they need the other much second. Can you? That doesn't happen here. It happens in the bed of it. Not good. Perfect. That's that. That's that. That's all there. Dick Deal Fog. Just they're having a awareness of the game clock. And then when you get to a higher level, you have the game clock shock. And it's going to happen in high school basketball. But just get, get into the habit of. Look up at that clock. 12 to 5, boom. 54 to 3, okay, get this started. And, or late in the game, right? 10 seconds left to go in the game. Panther Nation's down by one, right? And Panther Nation needs a little more time. Are they going to spend quarters? Let's make sure they start the clock on time. That's all blind side, right? Make sure they start the clock on time. Ken? Coochies. Tecker the game. Oh, integrity of me. I, I can't, I cannot minimize the importance of the crew chief is and the embodiment of what you want of the crew. Right? So I'm not going to show up in flip flops and shorts and a tank top. Right? You know, it was time we used to wear suits. But dress like, you know, work, work, work professions, right? Like, is this cash to right? And the type of super world more months, months time. But but understand that you're the rep for it, right? People are looking to you as the authority figure. The moment you walk off of that right out of your car, you start walking into the gym with your back, right? You're the preaching, right? And you handle yourself in a way that's going to reflect well on your crew, right? I'm here. My crew will shortly be here. Where's our dress room? I'd like to know who the administrator is, just so that I can introduce myself. You can call her, her, right? For happy to be here tonight. Is there any special instruction for tonight's game? Immediately take control. And whoever's greeting you, whether it's security, I said this guy, this gown is ready to rip through the skin. He is or she is locked into their role and their responsibility, and he's taking ownership for his crew or her crew. Right? So I can't minimize this last thing about the integrity of the game. You're a reflection of the RGB chat. You're a reflection of PASO. You're a reflection of the UIL. Right? That's who you represent when you take that floor as a sports official, in this case, a basketball official for a UIL being. Right? And there are responsibilities that come with that. So I'm going to end with this. You want to be a crew chief. You want to be a ref. Right? You got to think about all those things. You are the final stop between chaos potential. Or you are the final stop in terms of who is going to report out whatever happened and now it goes to the UIL and you're being called as a witness on what happened. Right? He would designate the referee. You were the crew chief. Tell us what happened. Right. Oh, that's the other thing I want to share with you. If there's something weird that happens, as the referee, the moment I get in the dressing room, I said, get your notepad out. 
By the way, Burke, nobody takes this. She took notes. Yeah, we have one more thing to know. To one more thing. So you get the gold star. And that's why you are going to referee college basketball. Aaron. Uh, my point is, get your notepad out. Something unusual happened. We had an injection, we had a fight, we had a coach removed, whatever the situation was. Get your notepad out. OJ, you're my U1. OJ, write down what you saw and what you know. Right? In your own words, right? Bert, you're my YouTube. Do the same thing. Okay, and then I'm going to write what I saw and what, right? And then we reconcile your report, your report, my report, and now we have one final report on the final order. Right? But I'm going to ask him for your input on this. And I'm going to tell him, be prepared for a phone call from the UIO or be prepared for a phone call from the athletic parade. And your story and your story have to match my story. We're all on the same page. And we live and die by our own proofs. I'll say we that in the own time. But it's very important that when something unusual happens, you're right, because you're there right then and there. Oh, oh, you're whack at home, Ruben. I'll breath. No, listen. Before we even <clears throat> be, I want you to write, it's right now fresh in your memo, right? You get home and the kids or whatever, the left legs, what? no. Right here, we're right here. We're all together. Let's get it straight, right? And it's the one central story. To, and, and, and we stick to that story because we're in this together, right? And if we did something wrong or we educated or we admit it, right? We admit it. So those are some of the things, ladies and gentlemen, that we think about when we are designated and the R. Lead official, crew chief, whatever you want to call it, right? But there are responsibilities that come with that. Or you too can be a huge chief. You should always want to aspire to be the R. You want to aspire to be the R, right? I look at my schedule. If I'm not the R, I'm like, wow. There are some poor dears at times that will put a younger, less, official, less experienced official as the R to see how they handle it. Right. And then the veteran he'll or will say, Tell me how Lydia did with the crew chief responsibility. Did she lead a good pregame? Did she contact you guys before the game? It's almost like a tips. Right? Some some four days do that. But I, I'd encourage Bert here at the high school level. You, you should have more like the people of this row, right? I will be sorely disappointed if you don't find yourself as the R in your assignments for the new season. Why? Because you're here listening to this presentation. It's not about how many years I've been officiating basketball. It's about how many times do I continue my education as a basketball official. And those of you that continue your education right, are going to be better prepared for the unusual. But, by the way, we had a little situation with Kevin Warren. We broke down that making Roe McGowan Ein situation and talked about that as a good example. Like, it's going to happen. Those unusual situations are going to happen, and when they happen, you got to be prepared, right? And as the referee, you must take responsibility for that. So hopefully, it's my understanding that by you guys and gals being in this session, that the chapter will be a little more favorable to assign you as the R. Before we have this weekend, as I have spoken to, uh, uh, um, Freddie Martinez, Robert Torres, Big Dirk, Josh, uh, Kelly Moore, about advocating for you all to be referees, whether it's in the mid and school, sub varsity or the varsity. It's time that there be individuals such as yourselves to start being leaders on the court and approve. And so this is a step toward that. And when I brought it up to them, they were willing to listen and willing to agree. So my goal and my plan is that I would advocate for all of you all to, to do that. And I'm going to send an email, and, and uh, Smitey back there knows that I send a million emails. You all know Zoom. I send a million emails. And so I'm going to do that. Can we turn this on? Yeah, show. Last thing we're going to show. It's really good. This is really good.
Let me turn that yeah, off. Email to the coach of the home team sent 72 hours before assignment. You can take a picture of this. Coach Spino, I have been assigned as a referee for the games on Friday, November the 6th. And my, my co-officials and I have discussed the assignment and expect to arrive at the gym by 5 p.m. for the scheduled start time for the first game at 6 p.m. We are looking forward to the games. Should there be any changes to the schedule or games, please feel free to contact me at 956 blah, 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 or email me at blah, blah, blah. Thank you, Ruben Rollins. Thank you, Coach Gibber. So I've already made in contact with the coach and say, I'm the referee. If there's any changes, issues, contact me. Here's how you do it. We expect to be there at five o'clock. Now, if you have a female, I, and I'll put there, I have, we have one female official. If possible, please have separate dressing area. So I'm Nick here. If, if you have a phone, I can take a picture. If you have a phone, take a picture. I'm taking care of my co-fish. And, and use your own words. But yeah, that's the general. That's still, right? On my guys, I normally add the statement, could you please have the administrator of a, for the game or games available for me to talk to them as I walk into the, the um, 99% of the time, guys, they're not going to have it. Right. And then you don't want to be two minutes till pass. Yeah. And like, hey, where, where's the administrator? Of, uh, uh, you should be ours. And you should be ours on a regular basis. Remember, you said something. Just because I've been officiating for 30 years doesn't mean I know the correct mechanics. How many people have officiated with me for 30 years and you're like, mm hmm. Whoops. Okay, oh. You want to be, ladies and gentlemen, you want to be, when you get an assignment, oh, I'm done with people. Good. You don't want to be all oh, Howard Burke. Oh. You don't want to be that guy or that girl. You want to see old oh, Jose, good. Caleb, good. Todd, good. Smiley, good. And by the way, because like a Canton or you might not have much time for a fee, but at least talk about these things. Greg, we don't have a comprehensive time for pregame, but at least talk about these things. All right? We're going to call the audience. Let's call the audience. Is that that hard? Call the audience bounce. Right? Illegal content. You know, now, the harder thing is, and we talk about this, is marginal content, illegal content. But if it's obvious, put air in the whistle. Right? Referee the defense. We were watching what the defenders are doing. He is in a press. I'm not going anywhere, Sin. Ten players. There's five defensive players in the backcourts. Press. I'm not going anywhere. I'm rev free the defense. I'm running up the floor. Two, three zone. Okay. Little to no rotation. They're in two, three zones. I see. I see. I see this. Hat fork. Right? And I see defender, defender, defender. What are they going to do? They're going to pinch them. I'm going to cross here, and then they're going to double team on. I'm refereeing the defense, and I'm adjusting my position to referee the defense. But I'm also thinking like the offense. What's the offensive trying to do? And I'm taking it to the basket. Like George Conway. You can just tell that player just locked in. I'm taking it to the rack. Block George call. Referee the defense from being like the offense. Right? Mm -hmm. Stay in your primary. This is the hardest part to learn, right? Like these guys, probably all three of these guys, probably this whole role right here. They all played the game recently, more recent than when I played the game. And there is a change in the eyes of a player to a referee. And it has to do with this. It has to do with primary area of coverage. And your primary area of coverage may not be where the ball is. It's off-ball coverage. The ball's over there, and I trust Bert to get what's going on over there. I got a problem with these two beasts. It has nothing to do with the ball. Players go with the ball. They go with the ball. 
That's the ball watchers that they have. Referees that are ball watching. Just watch their eyes. So you got to learn what is my slice of the pie, and that's where I focus. Right? And then it gets down to a little high level here. Whistle this. Whistle this up to money. What does that mean? Right? Play's coming right off. Here's the basket. I'm the lead. Right? OJ, you are my trail. Well, no, Smiley, you're my trail. OJ, you're, uh, you're my son. What's your age? I'm it. I'm it. I'm filming scene. Quote, I'm, I'm it. Is my center. Smiley's my trail. I'm the. Here comes the drive to the best. Right? Bow. Right? And Spidey sees it. Right? But Spidey's going to be disciplined about putting air in the whistle because in the pregame, we said plays to the basket. We're going to let the lead official get the right of the first refusal on illegal contact or not. That's the runovers and that's the hit going to the basket. We're going to let the lead have that crack. But if the lead does not put air in the whistle, and it's an obvious foul, for whatever reason, the lead does not put air in the whistle, what does Smiley do? Bang. Whistle disciplined. He's not going to crack immediately. He's going to see the foul, but he's also going to be thinking about, I trust my partner. We talked about the pregame. Place of the basket belong to the lead. I'm going to let the lead make that call. But if he does it, or she does, then you put air in the whistle. That's a cadence whistle. It's an hour whistle. That's just a slow whistle. Right? And of course, they're going to say, oh, that was a late whistle. It was a correct call. Might have been late, but the call was correct. That call needed to be made, coach. That was a foul, and you'll see it on video. Too. So you have to have that courage and conviction to make that call, but you also have the patience and the discipline to not put air in the whistle because I'm trusting my partner and I'm hoping that he's going to or she's going to get the call, right? So when you referee today, just work on this. I'm going to call the obvious fouls. I'm going to referee the defense and I'm going to think like the offense. I'm going to stay in my time area, area of coverage and I'm going to have whistle discipline so that I minimize the number of double whistles that we have because that can create confusion, right? We can work with you on signals and getting your arm up and saying things. We can work with you on that today. But in terms of your play calling and what minimizes the emotions of players and coaches is these things right here. We call the ominous, we referee the defense, and then stay in our primary. If you do those things today, we can work with you with everything else. Bird, I think I'm thinking uh, this is very good. This is just part of the communication we talked about earlier in the presentation. This is the referee responsibility. Okay? Don't take it lightly. And it's okay to say, you know, I don't know if I want to be in this team. Right? Recognize where you are in the pecking horn. Right? I might be the R in a game, and I've got two very seasoned veterans, right? It's almost like three R's in the game. Right? I may be seeing free name, I being the one you get there with game manager, whatever. We're out in four roll ours. Right? So just the part my part of this, what we're talking about, is that you're the referee, you're the R, you're the crew chief. What do you what should your mentality be for your co officials? You wanna lift them up. You know, one of the nicest compliments I got from Lydia is that she said I was very what? Uh, supporting? Supportive. So as an R, as a crew chief, you want to lift your crew up. It's not about you being the star. I can make these calls. and It's not about that. We've seen 99 Zoom sessions. We've seen. I can tell you the names of that point too. But we want to lift. That's part of the mentality of being an R. The call is healed. For said, Carlos, Smiley, you want to lift people up. It's all about the crew and the crew. We're a team. We're teammates. Let's think about it. That we're teammates. Okay. All right. And when you play the game, we're teammates. We want to lift our teammates. It would be supportive of our teammates, right? So think about that concept. 
do everything you possibly can when we're making being a great advocate for teammates. I'm it. Coach, Bert had a better look than I do. Well, Ruben, you should have. Bert had a better look. When he comes over here, you can ask him about it. And I'm not going to throw him out of Bert. Yeah, Bert got that one. I'll tell you, real, yeah, real, Bert got that up. Real quick. Ruben tees up coach. All right, Ruben tees up a coach. I'm the referee. Don't do this. Coach got it. I'm here to help you out. And, you know, he did, you know, but don't worry. I still talk to me with I'm I'm good with you and all this kind of stuff. What did I just do for, to Ruben? Oh, right on out. Oh, oh. They managed their oh, this is just it. Right. And we'll, how many times have we seen that? And then it's about time. That, and, and that's another thing, guys. And gal Shinson. Stay away from the sign lines. At you know, I, I affectionately talking about poking the bear here. Don't poke the bear. Don't get into it with coaches. Because it's gonna be a losing bat. Right, especially at the high school level, because they have all power. Right, I get it. I get it. I've seen it. I personally experienced it. I'll never go back to Latin Texas, but you what? No, no, there's a word. I don't even think. Didn't mind it. I'll... <laughs> Wait, here, here's the sideline. Right, here's the bench. And we're shooting free crows. Man, why didn't you guys hang in the hill? Get all the side You know why they're doing that? Some of you less experienced officials, why are officials standing right alongside the sideline? Or said, why do they do that? The, because you're seeing officials do yeah. that, right? Yeah. Why do they do that? Or the, the ones I've seen, they used to be talking to the coach and not paying attention to the game or anything. You know, and you yeah. see an official right here, it's because he or she wants to do what? Talk to a coach. Yeah. Talk to a coach. Stay out the sideline. Stay up, silent. Just stay up. You know what we talk to a coach? Boop. Did I just talk to a coach. I don't need to come over here. Hey, coach, I mean, uh, uh, I'll get you the next time. What kind of doctors do you want to put? Yeah, correct her. And a little bit cold wet. Does that make sense? It's biting me. Yes, sir. So, yeah. so where should you be? Get out here. Now, if the coach comes and says, hey, blah, 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 blah. I can hear you, coach. Yes, sir. He said, ba 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 Yes, sir. I'm not ignoring him, am I? But I'm not engaging. Hey, or hold on, if he was seeing my way, he took the two steps, and then he kind of leaned over a little bit. I'm looking for it. All right, that's one. Two. Bench decorum. How do we manage coach's expectation? We're not going to need their attentions. It's always on me. I'm there to it. And so you minimize the interaction. There are times when you have to go speak to the coach. Think that that should be the exception rather than the air for the seat. Same thing. Paul Pizzi, yeah. See the Time now. Wait, go. Time out. Time out. Okay. Let them go to their benches. Let them go. Uh -huh. Like, and, 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 and let's say praise my, my score. The score is like, like I'm just like, Come, hang on, hang on. I'm going to let her go to the benches. I might even wait until I start seeing them and sit down for a full time. Or it could be a 30 and they're standing up on the couch. For, if they're already at their benches, and then I'm going to go, timeout red, 33 red timeout, 30 second timeout, start the clock. Well, guess what? I just gained those teams. 15 or 20 or more seconds to start their conversation. Now, why is that important? Right. Because they don't want to come out of the hollow. Right? Mind rule. First horn. What do we do? We walk towards the, the so the official that's going to administer and throws guy at the ball at the spot, right? And then you have two officials. I'm not such a diagramming this here. I'm cut it here. Right? We got an official. The seat third same time will or year to year. Official to year. Official to year, please you go. Here the bitches. You start walking this way. On the first form. You start walking towards the bench. First form. And I keep walking towards the bench. I got first form, coach. Or first form. Okay. They gotta come out. Right? They don't come out. I start hey. Bring him out. Bring him out. Because on the second horn by rule, what do we do, Cardinals? 
Put the ball in play. We put the ball in play, or you could put the ball down and start counting. Start counting. You don't want to get to that. You don't want to get to that. You don't want to get to that. Okay? So, what do we do? First, slow down when you report the fat timeout. Let him go. Let him settle. Keep it funny. Okay. Red 33, full timeout, start. And I go back from, I give him a little more time right on the front end. But now I got to get him out. Just so, and double check on one last thing. If they are not coming out early in the game, I'm going to mind a center of influence, somebody on the base, an assistant coach. Can you help me get these guys out on the first one? Because I don't want to have football. Right? Ask an assistant coach to help me. Okay? Get those folks on the bench that can be that voice of reason and help you that kind of situation. But folks, by rule, on second horn, we play. And I've seen too many high school games, 99 sessions, and then we go first horn. Some of you guys don't even walk to the league. You got like at a distance bearer. Or do you do this? For more. And then the second horn, and they're still in the hog. Right? No. The second horn. I won't go to the coach smops. Oh, why my team and coach on situation. I'm embarrassing. I don't even go in college or about how to coach spots. Make just jocks. Hey, fine, Mike. And just take If this coach here is somewhere over here coaching and we're over here, the play action over here, and this coach is supposed to be somewhere he coaches spot, it's designated in your old book. Right? And he's over here in front of the scores table, question. Got it. You got to address the coach. And once again, you can use the voice of reason with his assistant. Now, Dean, as some assistant coaches are good, and sometimes they become head coach. So when we care. And some assistant coaches are mad at. So you got to know your personnel. But I tried to tell an assistant, can you help me? I know Coach Yerbon likes to, but he really needs to get back his box. He's, 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 he's in the way of the score and the time. And when I'm retorting about, he's standing there as a big guy, right? So can you help me keep him in his box, right? So you try to work to the assistant coaches. I know, and of course, the, 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 the comeback always, I'm just coaching. I'm not yelling at you, girls. I'm just coaching the kids. I understand that coach, appreciate that, value that. By rule, there's a coach's box. And right now, you're obstructing my view and the view of my score. So can we please go? Please, with an empanada, or a corn chant, or a you can go back to your coach. I'm just, and still, I'm just saying, there's too many instances where I see coaches not only there, sometimes they're out on the floor. They're out on the placing court. That's a danger to us, because when we're trailed and we turn and go, we don't turn and go. We turn and go, and we're turning and watching the play, and I can run in here. And now you're endangering my welfare, right? So I can't have you on the floor. Or you run into a player, you obstruct the player. Now we've got a bigger problem, right? So I implore you to start thinking about, how, and by the way, it's got to be the whole Ori country officials in the real Grand Valley violating this proposition. Because there's a lot of them that don't have the courage and conviction to say anything to that coach. Because they like to work at Panther Nation. And they did most of them for done. I, I get it. I get it. I understand. But by rule, that's incorrect. You're not going to get to the state tournament. You're not going to referee college basketball. You're not going to referee at any higher level if you don't take care of benches. Period. Care of And the only way we get cold, and by the way, when the state tournament, state tournament, you don't see coaches doing that. You don't see, you don't see coaches doing that at the regional tournaments or the by district playoff games, right? Why? Because the mighty UIL says, we want you to manage the benches. If you have a shot at going to the state high school tournament, you need to know that that's not acceptable. 
And there are guys and girls in the high school chapter that said, I don't really care. Because I'm never going to go to the state tournament. Well, guess what? You're hurting everybody in this room by not adjudicating the rules as state in the rule. I'm not making this up. This is by rule. There's a coach's box. And there's a reason why it's in the rule book. Okay. It's not any different by kitty hitting the head and you making no call that's incorrect. Because there's a rule that says that's illegal content. Well, we're just not going to call hints to the head in the real Randy Bell. We're just not going to deal with Binks to corner in the real Randy Bell. It's fundamentally wrong. And I will continue to be an advocate wherever I go, wherever I speak. And I talked to Charles Bright about this. Dr. Charles Bright of the executive director of the all-powerful, almighty university or scholastic thing about this topic, right? And until we rein in the coaches and we made that a point of emphasis and we hold them accountable and we hold TASO chapters and THSBOE chapters accountable for managing bench to quorum better, they're going to continue to abuse us because all they're doing there is breaking the loop. That's what we have a do. So any question, I think that I want to thank all of you for taking time out. For those of you that were here last night, for those of you here today, this is what it's all about. And we can talk until we're blue in the face about this and that, and you can diagram stuff, and now we can get out on the floor. And now we get out on the floor, and we start to apply some of this stuff. And now we start talking about positioning and stepping forward and staying engaged trail. And why didn't you rotate, right? And how does he open looks on plays, right? We'll go out there where he needs. And so thank you all for being here.